Hello there, this is uh, David from David Books and Comics. And today, uh, somebody uh, let me know that you forgot to show your uh, timely, and it's timely, I said Atlas, but it was timely, the precursor to both Atlas and uh, what later became Marvel Comics. So I thought I'd show you some more of uh, the, the Miss Fury. And I showed you the um, archival press edition with the Tarp Mills cover, very unique, very rare actually. This is uh, from uh, 1979. The copyright uh, 1979 uh, by archival press and Tarp Mills. And it features the uh, edited art for the uh, beautiful artwork uh, by, uh, by, of course, Tarpe Mills. And uh, I'm going to show you the, uh, the original comic book with the cover art by, um, this is the Timely comic. The cover art is by Alex Schomburg. And it has that very, which uh, uh, is hard to wa uh, see these days, is the uh, uh, these uh, stereotypes of the Japanese, which is kind of awful looking. But anyways, the um, this was uh, came out. Let's see here, 1943, uh, 44, fall of 1944, number five, uh, Alex Schomburg cover. The interior art is all uh, Tarp Mills. And uh, if you've ever read the um, books written by uh, Trina Robbins, and this is what's called a paper doll. So this is all intact, obviously. But people would cut that out and um, make paper dolls out of them. You can imagine cutting up a, nobody would imagine cutting up a comic book like this, even in the condition that's in. So it's a probably like, it's got a split spine. So it's like fair to, to maybe a good minus. And it has, uh, I don't know, probably a 1.5 to 2 in terms of grade. But I'll show you the other um, the series I collected uh, over the years. And uh, they, when I bought them, they were relatively inexpensive. I mean, really, compared to what the, the price these go for now. So this is uh, the Miss Fury comic. This one I bought not too long ago, actually. Uh, but the value has uh, subsequently gone up. So that's Miss Fury, and I already showed you the uh, the archival press edition. But I wanted to show you the, some of the other Golden Age uh, heroines that I have, and this is uh, very rare, actually, a Canadian edition that I bought way back, 19, I wanna say 1979. And this is, I'll pull it out. This one is put out, it's a Canadian edition, put out by um, Bell Features. Now Bell Features, of course, if any of you, uh, any of you might know, they uh, created um, what was called the Canadian Whites or um, the Canadian uh, Black and White comic books which featured characters like the Penguin, and uh, who was a kind of a mass detective. And uh, not to be confused, of course, with the DC Penguin, the villain of the Batman uh, comic books. And if you, uh, if you want to know anything about Canadian comic books, there's an excellent volume uh, on mainly uh, Bell Features comics. And this is the uh, great Canadian comic books, uh, which features uh, 
Nelvana, the Northern Lights, and uh, other characters. We'll just look. Dixon of the Mounted. And there's a, uh, a Nelvana story. Subsequently, they, they've been published. But this is uh, an excellent uh, edition book to have on the Canadian comic books. Anyway, so this is Bell Features, actually. And how we know is we look inside. You flip to the front cover. And there you have published uh, by... If you look carefully here, Bell Features. So what they did is they uh, repackaged some of these comics and, ma and uh, made them um, uh, with not exactly the best coloring, by the way. But they repackaged them and just uh, published them here in Canada. So this is a very, very rare, the Canadian uh, version of this. If you know the original, it has a, a black. The Canadian edition does not. It's white. So this is probably a comic book that not too many people own, if anybody. So that's that one. There you see ads for here in Canada. All right, so that's that. And I'll show you a couple of the other Blonde Phantoms that I have. And this is number eight, 18. That's a, a timely. And I believe it's 1948. We'll look inside. This one I got fairly inexpensively only because there was a staining here, if you notice. There's staining here. And there's, uh, you know, age shadows here. Here. Otherwise, the book is quite intact. There you see, and it's signed by a former owner. Blonde Phantom Comics, published 1948, Let's see, number 18, July 1948. Yeah, this one is quite, there's the Submariner, Nomura. This one's quite intact, actually. Uh, the staining on the cover is what devalues the book, but other than that, it's, I'd say it's, uh, without the staining, it's probably in the very good category. And I'll show you another one that I have. This is the second to last one. There's a total of, I believe it's 11 issues. Starting with uh, all select number 11. Anyway, this is number 21. It's a blonde phantom. This one, the story looks like it was, this I bought from the Pacific Comic Book Exchange way back when. It has tears, see there, to, the, to some of the pages. Otherwise, the story is intact and attached, uh, some spine splitting, but the cover is attached. And there you have Submariners, usually uh, in, the, in the, yeah, there's a Submariner story and a science fiction story with all the trademarks of Otto Binder. All right, so that's my little collection, a little foray into the golden age of uh, superheroines. Those are the few that I have of the golden age. I never m minded uh, buying these because of the, the fairly inexpensive price, largely because of the conditioning, the conditioning of the books. But they've, as comic books tend to do, they tend to go up in value. So this is, according to the blurb, 
It's from uh, January uh, 1949. And within the, within the book, there's an article uh, and the title. I don't know if it's the first time there's a title that says Marvel Comics. Maybe we'll look inside and have a look. I'll show you. Not too many people probably have seen this. So there you go. There's where you see Marvel Comic Group. And it says the editors on the bottom. Basically, it's an editorial um, to uh, before the before the comics code uh, an an an, an apologia defending uh, the the type of stories that uh, marvel uh, then called timely is publishing so there you go so this is blonde phantom number 21 so i hope you enjoyed this little foray into the golden age and before I go, I'll show you some of the modern uh, appearances of uh, Blonde Phantom. Some of you who know, who follow the um, She-Hulk comic book, know that she was uh, an assistant to, to the She-Hulk. And there's the Golden Age uh, Blonde Phantom right there. Now, this is a cover by John Byrne. And I'll show you another uh, appearance that she made in the She-Hulk series. So this is The Return of the Blonde Phantom, a three-part series. There's Louise Mason as a elderly matron. And uh, this is the second in the part in the three parter, number twenty two. And this is the third part. This is when Louise Mason's daughter takes up the mantle. Okay, so there you go. That's your my little foray into the golden age. So I did. Sh uh, this is the golden age book that I have. It's an edited version. And like I, I said in a previous episode, if you want the complete version, you really have to collect this two volume set of the Sunday pages by Tart Mills of uh, Miss Fury. And if you want a nice, probably very original painted cover by Tart Mills, this is the book to get by Archival Press published in 1979. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you if you did, give me a like, continue to subscribe. I thank you all for those who, who've subscribed already. And um, comment if you want or uh, uh, if you need uh, to me to answer any questions. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye.